and then I said, mm. "Oh, oh, yes, hello, hello everybody. Good Welcome. to have you all here. How's everyone doing? Podcast time number yep. eighty-two. Number eighty-two. It's ridiculous that there are that many of them. Oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't get the reference. No, I didn't. <laughs> High Q. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, nope, so, still don't get it. It's all good. Uh, uh, Never Patel, hello. good to see you here. Daiki, Wally, Cinna, Mint, Peps, Lunyosin, Ollie, Gui, yeah. Kyle, Darwin. Watching your unboxing video while watching this, Darwin. Ugh. Ah, you Double are. Double timing. You are. You are. You are the maddest of lads. Wow, yes. that, that is incredible. <laughs> also, awesome. Fair warning, warning here. I will do Kenny spoiler or otherwise dangerous comment. No hard feelings. Thank you, Daiki. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Good to see you, Shy Monkeys. Dr. Women Respector. Sufu. Hey. Gooey with the Xbox controller. For real. And Gooey, we're going to do uh, a special <laughs> recording thing because yeah. uh, I misinterpreted the, uh, the the subtle hint you gave. And, uh, but it didn't fits because dense the anime reaction protagonist. You know? Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. Yep. Uh huh. Makes, that's, makes that's how it all sense. works. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to spell out in like like legal terms, basically, like like the, right. where there's no possible. Yep. Well, actually, no. Legals are usually very confusing. But the point is, no ambiguity whatsoever. Cause see, I thought you meant when you said open the boxes. I didn't even see the plural part, so I thought you meant open the box and then continue right. with the letter. <laughs> even though the letter was inside, but it's like yeah, cause you know the letter's on top, so it's like go through the rest of the box, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> they they uh. Say so you guys are officially weebs now with watching Guitari. Uh, okay. But the thing okay. is, we've only like started Guitari. Is the thing. Like, don't we have right. to watch like all of it and then give like, you know? Our... Already not not according to this guy. Okay, I mean, cool. No, not at all. Eric Walt, I'm no Guitari fan. I just wanted to stop by and say hello. Hello. Hello, Eric. Yes. Let the waifu wars begin. Oh, oh yeah, we we will discuss. Uh, we will discuss the best girl kind of yeah. things there. We already did it a little bit in a previous mm -hmm. thing, but I mean, uh, yeah. yeah yeah uh-huh caleb will have an easier time playing witcher 3 with the controller mm. oh that's a good point i didn't yeah. think about that are you going to react to one punch man season two uh not anytime soon yeah necessarily i mean no yeah no not it really. might end up going on a poll no um yeah we are all weebs people are weebs after the first five episodes of guitar to be honest okay, because if they can go. make it past all of the stuff that happened with hachikuji um then they must be a weeb is that is that it Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's like a weeb gate. I mean, possibly. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Have you heard of the anime called The Promised Neverland? <laughs> uh, no, actually, we've never heard no, of it. Never before. heard of it. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. no. Is that uh, we some are, kind of like we are watching? Uh, blob, we are like watching that? Kizu Monogatari next. <clears throat> the uh, the three movies. So let's get it out of the way. Araragi, best girl. Right. So Jacob, let's let's get this out okay. of the way. Right. Let, right let's just. Right. Bring the guns yeah. out to the very yeah. beginning. Senjigahara's best girl. Right. Yeah. Other than Senjigahara. Other than Senjigahara, the 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 it watching would be of Hitagi, episode. Right. <laughs> nice. Uh, the watching of episode fifteen uh -huh. gave me a whole new appreciation for Hanakawa as a character. It gave and me a whole new appreciation for Shinobu. For sure. Uh, but kind of getting to that point where you realize how much foreshadowing had been built up in the, those 14 episodes till you know not just the reveal of hanakawa being in love with araragi like really being in love but the thing of how every other character basically assumed oh you're with senju gahara i could have sworn you'd end up with hanakawa like i could have sworn oh, you'd uh -huh. pick that you know romance path essentially right and right i am so excited for future stuff with hanakawa and yet i i feel like i'm stuck if i was to pick second place i'd be stuck between a three-way tie of hachikuji hanakawa and uh a, kambaru a three-way tie now you need to be very careful about how you say these things caleb because mm. are you saying that it is a three-way well if i was involved tie, it would be a four-way so i'm not well, saying that jacob it's uh, it's, a, it's a three-way tie on, caleb. it's a like, three-way tie <clears throat> No, Araragi is being dutiful and faithful to his uh. girlfriend, Senja Gahara. Which, by the way, I like love that throughout this whole thing, he's still with Senja Gahara yes. and they love each other even, a lot. It's, even though, it's, it's even, the best. Even though it's he awesome. does have some Baka moments along the way, uh -huh. 
Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. His, yeah. his 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 baka survives and goes into the monogatari. <laughs> It yeah. survives the monogatari. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because doesn't monogatari mean something like story or something it's like, like my that? love story. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. there you go. There yeah. you go. Perfect. Or, or no, no. Monogatari is love story. Ore monogatari is my love story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, Everyone's going crazy. Uh, end of the stream. Y'all got to sing the Nautica opening. Best part about that arc. It's really unfortunate that we only got that for two episodes because it's such a good opening. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna do that the, the full song or anything like that. But no, before no, we get too no. far into this, we gotta give a VIP shout out to Robert, recently joined us on Patreon. Thank you all so much, yes. Robert, for your Thank support. You. It means a lot. It's glad to have you here. Hope you join the Discord soon and uh yeah appreciate mm-hmm. it very much so 15 episodes of bakamonogatari right we've watched them all uh-huh we have Fif- indeed yeah 15th one's coming out on uh yes. early access i believe this uh, thursday thursday, thursday. Yes. right yeah. so y'all here mm-hmm. on twitch get to be a part of the discussion a little bit early on things right. uh yeah so we'll be talking a little bit about that but we'll be primarily i think talking about the 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 story as a whole but more so just the characters and kind of some just general insights and things that have been brought up in Discord discussion in general. Things that, you know, we like to get some feedback from you guys, but also, you know, just interact with that. Hey, Dr. Woman Respector with the 100 bits. Bucket podcast before episode 15 is released, Nanny. By the way, have you heard of Sarazanmai? It's currently airing. And let me just say, if you thought Monogatri was an acid trip, oh boy, this takes it to a whole new level. Would recommend it wholeheartedly. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the recommendation. Appreciate it. Mm. Appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, yes. The new Twitch tier. Earlier access. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, basically. Bakemono, monster, monogatari, story, bakemonogatari, monster, monster story. Monster. Huh. Cool. Monstery. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so of the 15 episodes that we watched, there were a couple where we wanted to kind of, you know, bring up some specific things that we thought were just yeah. really cool yeah. moments. But we're also going to be talking a lot about the the primary six characters. So, Oshino, sorry, you're not really going to be right. too much in the discussion. Unfortunately, he's a good guy. He was a good guy. Even even <laughs> as sad as it to say, as it is to say, given the animation of that last episode, Shinobu yeah. is also not on this list of characters because you know, you know, her arc is probably coming sometime we, we can, we in can, the future. We can save theories for the end of this whole thing exactly. there, but yeah, yeah we'll, we'll go into that with those mm-hmm. things potentially uh, there. Uh, probably some of our are just going to list off all the episodes and then we'll discuss them a little bit. Episode 5, episode 8, episode 12, and episode 15. Those four episodes yep. really stood out to us as being pinnacles of, of Bakemonogatari Which, when you for think very different it, reasons. And, and when you think about it, given mm. that's 25% of the show. Yeah. Like, the, like, when we think about, okay, favorite mm-hmm. episodes, it's like, well, yeah. uh, there's 25% of them. And yeah. not to say that the other 25% aren't awesome, but right. like the idea that the there's 25 percent of them just blew us away that's that's really good that's right really and good. and there are other episodes on here that would be like immediately after that but we don't have i would say the uh, i would say the, the the insight to be able to do like a tier list right these are just the four that we're going to be bringing up here there are other ones that we you mm-hmm. know aren't mentioning on here that we could definitely take up more discussion of a podcast and stuff like yeah. that but okay episode five i want to just kind of kick off with this was the episode I feel like where I fell in love with the potential and the actual show. Like just watching this show for you know the first time and going through it, I was lost and I was basically like Hachikuji, just kind of lost meandering, trying to uh, figure this thing out and yeah. stuff. And I felt like once we had the Senjugahara fascination scene. And we figured out the whole twist with Hachikuji. Yeah, that twist was that fantastic. Whole thing. I, I, like, there was something really special that this show basically just kind of, it just kind of bloomed right in front of me. And I was like, oh, whoa, oh my God, this show is really good. Yeah. This show is really oh, yeah. good. Like, cause, cause the thing is like, Senju Gahara's whole arc and Senju Gahara just as a character, absolutely fantastic, right? But that was where they're like, no, no, no. Like for, for me, I feel like that was where I basically 
my my worries that they would leave certain characters by the wayside as they went through arcs mm-hmm. that was completely calmed it was like okay no right. it's, it's going to be fine right that we'll be able to handle all the characters and all the mm-hmm. stuff and have it still work together in an overarching narrative um while introducing new characters and new arcs and all that stuff yeah because one of the things i was worried about was i wasn't going to enjoy the protagonist as much one of the things that kind of turned me off mentally to the idea of monogatari was that it's uh you know it's got that kind of harem structure Mm -hmm. you have the main guy character and 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 most harem protagonists are dumb dense self inserts and i would say might be dense and yeah he is definitely dumb but he's not no he's not he's no i would say he's not dumb he's not dumb and he is definitely not a sure. self insert. He has dumb moments, but yes, right. Right, he's but dense. everyone has he's dumb dense. moments. Right. He's a, everyone right. has dumb right. moments. He's a baka. Yeah, yes. he's a baka. I fe- mm-hmm. I fell in love with Senju Gahara like even before this, I would say. But this was what sold me on Senju Gahara and Araragi together. Right, exactly. Because, yes. because Araragi appreciated Senju Gahara and in some ways was like, fascinated well yes but he did this this little thing by basically calling out her her little basically giving like a little throwback to her and she's just like oh oh like mm-hmm. they kind of had like a oh like this is cute like this is this is adorable and while he's he's totally a baka yes a- no. absolutely i i got excited about their relationship and how the other characters would basically add to the flair of that because when we okay. were discussing the show, we at multiple points were like, Araragi does not deserve Senju Gahara and stuff, right? Right. And, I mean, it's easy to say because what mortal being could, but, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Araragi's, Araragi's still really good. Yeah, and, and, he, and he grows and changes in these little ways that I would say he begins to respect Sendra Gahara more. So you actually see right. their relationship uh-huh. slowly, I mean slowly, developing uh, alongside these other girls in their right. mini arcs. But it all, uh, it all, I would say, has these these little... It's kind of funny, because I would say almost the, the reason why all four of these are our top four is because they're milestone moments also in the whole Sendra Gahara Araragi relationship. Like the next one on our list is episode eight. Oh sure, and yeah, yeah. Well, right. It's, which, it was a big moment for uh-huh. Senju Gahara specifically, but also the right. dynamic between Kambaru and Araragi. Yeah, because with with like a show like Bakumonogatari, like because mm-hmm. this this portion of it and stuff mm-hmm. from what we've seen, yeah, the the banter is absolutely fantastic. It's top notch. The thing is, there are a bunch of other stories out there that have good banter, right? And they end up being forgettable still. Even yep. if they're very enjoyable. Yep. And I think with, with Monogatari, what it's done so far is that it's made the banter good, but also relevant and progresses things in, in a more concrete way with the characters themselves. The One of the biggest issues I have with anime romances is that the lack of com- communication. Mm-hmm. And they don't do that here. Like, episode For eight sure. was one of those ones where it felt like it was going to be a culmination of all the lack of communication between Araragi and Senju Gahara. But then she shows up, and they have good communication, and mm-hmm. then she has good communication with Kanbaru, and mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah, and what was great about this whole thing was Senju Gahara kind of comes in, to, in some ways to save Araragi. Because Araragi in this episode, by the way, the animation, the fighting in this episode is absolutely off the chain. is so good. Fantastic. And Araragi yeah. is getting the snot beat out of him. Yep. Like they literally censor the blood as to how much like right. Kambaru is just letting out all of her rage and frustration <laughs> uh-huh. onto yep. Araragi. Even though they talk about it, she more or less wanted to beat the crap out of Senju Gahara for denying her and basically mm-hmm. being this unattainable goal as well which was showcased very well in the backstory in that episode so that that the backstory in that the, episode was yeah. absolutely fantastic yeah episode eight felt like the full package of what this show could deliver as of what we had seen at that point sure and we still hadn't seen like the best episode in bakamonogatari at this point which so, is obviously episode 10 you know <laughs> the the finale with uh sengoku's arc no we're talking about episode 12 yeah we're talking about episode 12 here yeah seriously seriously episode 12 um episode 12 kind of surprised me because one it comes out of 
you know, it, it, it kind of comes out of nowhere in that you're in the middle of Hanakawa's arc. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with kind of learning about Golden Week and things in the past and stuff yep. like that. And then suddenly we're going to go on a date. Yep. And exactly. Because Senju Kahara doesn't like to be ignored. Right. And there's a lot of meta things going on there with the idea that Hanakawa is essentially being ignored on a meta level mm -hmm. with the story. Right. Because Senju Kahara is there and Senju Kahara is all that's really important uh -huh. to. And literally uh, takes Aragi's focus away from her for an episode. Mm -hmm to spend time with it, her it's really clever but mm -hmm. then they have this really sweet uh kind of feeling out of each other's not just uh, inner not thighs ju <laughs> yeah yeah not just communication but where where each other are at differently as opposed to like earlier in episode two and yeah. episode five mm -hmm. so you get this feeling that they're in a real relationship and their relationship matters to the story like there are a lot of times where i've seen in uh, in one, in romances in general, mm -hmm. they don't showcase anything after the confession. The yes. confession happens, they uh -huh. showcase their, they, they love each other, they both love each other, and then it's done. The or story's maybe done. maybe there's melodrama because it's a sitcom and they have to keep it going, and then it's, oh no, are they cheating right. on me or whatever. Or, oh, we'll introduce a new couple for the will-they-won't-they they dynamic. Right. Yeah. And in uh -huh. this, basically, the whole show, and this is something maybe I expected less out of monogatari was that i expected that all the other girls would provide foils to uh, aragi with regard to distracting him from his relationship with sandra gahara and while they were foils to him in that they all poked holes in his ego in his manhood sure. and basically any kind of his stubborn you know right. cocky personality his his perviness or what have you he still stayed dedicated to sandra gahara throughout the entire thing even, even if though he, like maybe... even though he was being a horny you know teenage right exactly boy, you know yeah 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 yep. and and then just the presentation of this this episode i love their car ride too oh yeah just, well and i love like, i love her dad yeah yeah like, and the fact yeah, that it's so that, realistic because like, because here's the thing the, the idea and I, I said this in the discussion for that episode mm -hmm. possibly multiple times but yeah the fact that she didn't get much time with her dad Right. right. Her dad was constantly busy with yeah. stuff, and and he was aware of that. And he talked about how he's like, I, I realize I, you know, I could be a better father and stuff, and I've mm -hmm. I've made mistakes and things like that. Yeah. Um, and then she asks him to drive, to to basically be the chauffeur. Right. Them. And then he ends up just you know sitting in the car waiting for them to to finish their date, and so mm -hmm. he can drive them home. Like that. That I just think is so cool because yeah. it's it's showing that there's the fact that she's having Araragi meet her dad, yeah. right? Which is, is is a big deal. It's a big but deal, But then there's yeah. also the idea that it's like, and, you know, I love you that much, that this precious thing of, of spending, you know, time with my dad, I'm going to give that up because mm -hmm. I would much rather spend the evening with you. Yeah, and yeah. then they have a wonderful evening. I also really liked the conversation uh, the dad had with Araragi, basically saying, you you don't know but she's changed a mm -hmm. lot yep. in the last little bit and i'm assuming a good chunk of that a good portion of that or the majority of that is because of you know the relationship you two have so you know mm -hmm. you know treat treat her well but also there was this kind of this well done there was kind of this thank you because you know even though i'm not being the father i'm not being as present as i could have been you're you're doing so much Right. Uh, it it uh -huh. was something where... Making it so that she's not alone. Right. And, and it's also something that, uh, as the audience, if you had any doubt as to whether or not Araragi was doing a good job or doing basically or being a good boyfriend to Senju Gahara mm -hmm. since the episode five stuff, we already saw, oh, okay, yeah, they, uh -huh. he's, yeah. he's worthy. This was a, okay, they, like, they're, both in, they're both on equal, equal right. playing field here. And it made a... Yeah. It made a lot of sense. It was just really good. Because episode eight, the resolution to that, while it was absolutely fantastic, if it was by itself, I could have ended up seeing it as being a thing where it was just Senju Gahara covering for Araragi's screw-ups, mm -hmm. you know, of, like, not talking to her about stuff and things like that, mm -hmm. right? But the way that the episode was handled, it was just so good. Mm -hmm. Like, that... Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Wolfsbane53, thank you so much for the follow. Glad to have you here. Yes. Oh my gosh. So we have uh, episode 12 um, basically providing a slight detour from the Hanakawa arc. One of the things that surprised me about episode 15, and you guys will get more of the dis this, this discussion when we uh, release the episode, 
by the way, if you're not a Patreon, go check that out so you can get early access on exactly. that. You know, it's yeah. Patreon.com slash mm-hmm. Semblance of Sanity. See um, exactly how we reacted to that crazy Shinobu <laughs> animation. Right. Yeah. Uh, episode 15 was like masterfully presented. Oh, the, yeah. The, the, the OST, the freaking the animation. Uh, visuals, the animation, yep. everything. And mm-hmm. then even the voice acting. One of my favorite parts isn't voice acted even. But, like, talking about the voice acting, I just got to talk about that. But there's a part where they showcase uh, Hanakawa breaking the mask yeah, uh-huh. in, in basically a flashback. Just showing yep. things, weirdly enough, from outside Araragi's perspective. And it's kind of one of those things of, like, mm-hmm. yep. whoa. Yep. Whoa. We, we knew that Hanakawa liked him. Like, we knew on some level that Hanakawa, yeah. Yeah, because it's the every girl likes Araragi exactly. thing, except Kambaru, because she she doesn't swing that way. Right. But but the oh Hanakawa liked it was kind of a it was kind of a yeah of course she does yeah I mean yeah we see her hanging out with him and right. she that was like the she one drops that was little hints and from stuff the very beginning of the show right yeah. but we didn't realize how serious it was we didn't realize that she loved him like she really. Right. And really loved him. She had a huge crush on him. And, and we she, could tell that there was something more than what was on the surface. And that's why we went, that's why we guessed Yandere. Because we were like, ah, there's something that she's sort of containing here. Right. That's, there was some, the, that's some very powerful emotions yeah. that, that she's not letting, you know, out. There's the whole visual representation of having bars in front yeah, of uh-huh, wherever the, she the, is. The so it's showing that she's mm-hmm. caged in, that her... Yep. Uh, that her emotions and who she really is is being locked behind something there, either of her own doing or mm-hmm. the whole essence of what oddities are is basically the, you know, the oddity within her that's keeping mm-hmm. it uh, locked away. Audacious Vile, thank you so much for the follow. Yes, Glad to thank have you. you here. Um, what was your favorite kind of bit of foreshadowing, though, specifically with Hanakawa that you saw, like, resolved in episode 15? I don't know. I mean, because, like, that... Hanakawa, I feel like, is the character that best was best utilized that best utilized the shaft animation style. Oh, okay. Because with everything that they did with like the the bars and the things like mm-hmm. that, or the or where they would do the transitions to something else that sort of right. is thematically relevant, you know, uh-huh. even if it's not literally relevant. Sure. Um that I would say was the best aspect of Hanakawa because it, it helped get into it helped us get into her psyche. Because for some, for a lot of the other characters, it felt a lot more straightforward. Mm-hmm. But because with Hanakawa, there was that duality, right? In, right. In a very real sense. Mm-hmm. Um, getting that Shaft perspective on things really fit well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that, like, it wouldn't be a specific thing. It was mm-hmm. just, in general, Shaft being Shaft. Yeah. My, my favorite one was one that I didn't even notice upon looking at it i already mentioned it earlier was the everyone expected uh araragi to end up with hanakawa like it is repeated over and over and over again throughout the past uh episodes Uh and it's something where it's like why is it in this show and i I don't want to get into theories here but i'm 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 curious about what your thoughts are on this we can talk about it later but basically that the girls tend to basically have this unique insight into Araragi to speak almost like almost like exposition y into directly into his mind. Oh my god. And and specifically with the whole thing of them being like, Oh, why why not Hanakawa? Why mm-hmm. Senja Gahara? Why yep. Senja Gahara? Why not Hanakawa? Uh, basically that they can all see what's plainly obvious you know, blatantly obvious. Mm-hmm. What what is it? <laughs> oh, just someone said in chat. Yeah, this is this, this was uh Kamalk. Yeah, the shaft really fit Hanakawa. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> but um mm-hmm. so given given all that, we end up with this situation where Senja Gahara basically just like, you know, Miss Steel, steal your boy, Miss Steel your man, just basically like shoo, just takes mm-hmm. takes Araragi. And the thing is is that Araragi, of course, is fascinated with Senja Gahara. Naturally. Absolutely. But the thing is, is that there's also this aspect of Senja Gahara kind of choosing him. Like, like sure. in the mm-hmm. in the second episode, Araragi passes the test of, while well, he is totally getting a hard-on from watching her uh-huh. change and stuff, yeah, yeah. he is not, you know, he is Doing not, he is not breaching it. her boundaries. Right. He is not 
uh, he is not doing something that she would expect right. of someone who has no self control or mm-hmm. is just you know primarily controlled by their urges and stuff. And in episode five, like she mentions, like I mean, hey, maybe it is because I was just you know desperate for love and connection and stuff, so mm. I, I latched onto the first person that showed me some kindness. But I mean. Hey. But I mean that that doesn't mean you can't have a good relationship come from that. Exactly. Yeah. Like just because the instances of where things met, the, like where things started, mm-hmm. doesn't mean that things have to end based upon that. People grow, people change. Right. There's 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 character, there's experiences that evolve based upon the time elapsed. So yeah, it mm-hmm. is something really special. And of course, you know, episode fifteen had the glorious, the glorious Neko Hanakawa. Which oh, was just, oh, sure. I mean, yeah. it was awesome. And I, I loved the dialogue coming from uh, from Neko Hanakawa. Yes, even... It was so, yeah. so good. <laughs> like, just every time that she was around, like, in the show, it was fantastic. Like, I, I loved so much the whole... Uh, the, the menagerie manager that managed to dream, <laughs> you know, of managing a menagerie manager. Menagerie, someone, someone whatever. get us, someone get us the full line of what the, the tongue twister is, because I ended up saying it in the actual uh-huh. video and I did a pretty good job. You did too, but I would love to try it again here just to see if I can uh, get it into a clip for you all for, uh, for Twitch. That, yeah. that would be kind of fun. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll eventually do some theories, chat. Don't don't worry. Yeah. We'll we'll just we'll just save um, that for later. One of the other things that I thought was awesome with uh, Hanakawa's, um, you know, uh, Black Hanakawa or the Metal Cat, yeah, was how they were constantly um, having her be in motion. Mm, sure, because Hanakawa, like, okay, could it just be that it's because it's the Cat Girl and it's the you know the finale of the the series or the you know the season and in the finale of an arc and things like that, but. But Hanakawa, the way they drew her, it was always very like rigid, like mm. like she was holding everything in, right? Sure. She was keeping yeah. control of herself, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas with the metal cat, then suddenly right. she's letting herself go, right? Yeah. And then so Expression. every aspect of Expressive. her is in motion, right? Whether it's whether it's her shirt or her boobs or her hair, or ears or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. It's just constantly moving around, and that's that's one of those things where they could have skimped a bit so that that way they could you know have it be like the fight or the part where shinobi right. shows up or whatever but they didn't mm-hmm. i'm really glad that they did that because that was for sure that was really cool yeah um bum, bum, bum. Uh, okay so we'll we'll get back to chat stuff in a second yep. let's talk about the characters so one of the things that um surprised me a lot in early early episodes of Bakemonogatari was Araragi was very quickly, I would say, characterized. And while he was obviously going to be the semi-dense, pervy mm-hmm. protagonist, you right. know, the freaking show starts with a, you know, a panty shot. Like, yeah, that's like, it. Mm-hmm. But there was this aspect of him who had the, I would say, kind of, kind of the, uh, hmm. I would say kind of a basically he he felt like a character who was easily wrapped in his own not self-loathing but just kind of typical teenager angst, you know, just kind of typical kind of stuff there. Mm-hmm. He's growing up, but then he has this like urge he has to help all these all these girls and stuff like yep, that. Yeah, because this urge will not be denied. I yes, and there's a lot of meta things, a lot of like, you know, kind of more simpler, you know, sexy sexual things. jokes to be uh-huh. made there and stuff like yeah. that but uh as they continued upon that and stuff you got the sense that araragi has this like hero savior complex mm-hmm. he just has to help them and in some ways he kind of he kind of sets himself up like with kambaru to take a beating specifically so that sure. they don't have to deal with their problems mm-hmm. which is funny because in some ways Araragi holds them back from not not not, not that completely. I think he most of the time ends up steering them in the right direction, uh-huh. but he sometimes holds them back from solving the problem themselves. Right, because, because that's he's the trying thing. To solve the problem because he's trying to solve yeah. the problem for everyone. Whereas right. actually, you kind of need to let other people just kind of come to the conclusion mm-hmm. themselves, or you guide them to the conclusion, but you don't make them choose it solve yeah, uh-huh. it you make them right. or you just kind of let and, them choose it and yeah. maybe and that's probably the biggest thing i feel like that oshino mm-hmm. contributed to this season is that it was not just that he did that for the other characters of helping them 
choose you know right. to save themselves and stuff mm-hmm. but also his interactions with araragi along that regard yes the idea that Ara- araragi couldn't always like he wouldn't necessarily be the one to save people right like he could help them but they're the one who has to save them who have to save themselves when it comes yeah. right down to it yeah um, so all the girls have some kind of animal that they're corresponding to because of their oddity through symbolism, but it's something that I don't think on immediate, like first watch through, I was catching entirely that they were going not just for this animal motif, but that the animal motifs were not some kind of possession or some kind of like demon or extra dimensional force or whatever right. they were an actual like issue internally uh-huh. within the character represented symbolically by these animals right Is and that's it, a yeah. very clear difference so and and even if yeah. it was something where there was that supernatural aspect you know mm-hmm. it always tied very strongly into who they were as people right and how they needed to grow as people which oftentimes had to do also with the fact that they were in high school which helped out um well okay hmm. most of them were in high school <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah but but we have you know with the cat with hanakawa we mm-hmm. have the crab with senju Gahara, we have the snail with hachikuchi we have the monkey with kambaru and we have the snake with uh sengoku mm-hmm. so of all these kind of symbolisms connections here um would 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 you have like a specific one where you felt like the it symbolism was, was was like a favorite or one that really stood out to you and made the connection like very well or ones where you felt like had like i don't know the the best kind of one-to-one uh, well kind of I, I think there. you might have uh you might have already ordered it in the list of what your order is which oh is really pretty much what mine is too oh okay because that's not the order for that oh, okay. that's just the order in which the characters were introduced oh okay but yeah. so hanakawa is my favorite from the standpoint of the correlation between the uh the oddity and her character development gotcha because it it fit the the stylistic mm-hmm. choice totally fits like as much as i loved the whole thing with with hitagi's yeah like story arc resolution and everything uh-huh why a crab like you know some aspects of it make sense you know of like the er the big claws and the armor a, and stuff you know i was talking with daiki the other day and there was one thing that he said that was really funny it was something that made me laugh because it's a tsundere basically joke was Crabs are hard on the outside, soft on the inside. Oh yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. yep. sooner. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And they and they've got the big chompers, uh-huh. and they always sidestep things. They don't approach it directly. Mm, yeah, uh-huh. sure. Yep, yep. And then the whole poison aspect. Yep. Oh, poison aspect. Yeah, like if you try and if you try and uh, cook a crab, it'll poison itself. Oh. So you have to slowly turn up the heat. Oh. Oh wow, that's. So that could be a, that could be a that could be a connection to the idea of self sabotage if you if you yeah. try and love them, for because sure. Because they might not they might not be willing to because oh, it's okay. like okay, you know because hard on the outside right for sure. Um, okay, that's interesting. I didn't think about that. Okay, but yeah, yeah. The cat one is one of my favorites, but I think it's actually tied with the snail. Uh, Hachikuji, oh, yeah? I really got like like really quickly the whole idea of like oh this is one of those characters who has their burden it's right there it's specifically like 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 just plain as day it's just right there and it's even in the shadow like you know all all around and stuff like that but the idea of this little girl going around and just trying to find their way home but they're they've got this burden that they don't talk about there's no like direct connection that Hachikuji brings up to this mm-hmm. this big burden on her back being something that's actually like something that has to deal with there. And then and Hachikuji has also this other problem of where she's completely unwilling to trust anyone. So the very people that sh- she could actually gain help from in order uh-huh. to find a home, she's resisting that. So you get this sense of someone who's stuck, a snail, you know, moves slowly. Mm-hmm stuck on their own kind of right, mucus, right. you know, trail or whatever. Sure. But well, they, yeah, only able to follow specific paths. Only able to follow specific paths, exactly. Uh-huh, yeah. And then uh, is not able to really get anywhere of note without being, you know, at the, the threat of some kind of, you know, anything else crossing its sure. path. Yeah. 
Oh, and by the way, I might have been wrong about the whole thing with the crabs and the boiling. I That might be frogs where you need to do that so that they don't jump out. With crabs, you might actually need to boil them very quickly so that they instantly cook so huh. they can't poison themselves. I'm not sure. So maybe that doesn't hold up. But, yeah. Um, okay. But, yeah, yeah the, the Hachikuji was... was that was that was great. I love that they had the backpack and like, <laughs> and it's so ridiculously huge. Right. And I didn't realize until like I can't remember if I did realize like right before like oh she's a snail you yeah. Know? Um. But then they show her face planted on the pavement and it's like <laughs> okay yeah um snail there there we there go. There it is. Yep. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. The one that surprised me and how much I liked it, given how in the immediate sense i wasn't really as on board with it was kambaru with the monkey the whole the arm essentially oh, yeah. the, the beast arm because mm -hmm. it didn't necessarily in my mind tie immediately to some kind of animal as it did tie to kind of the the rage the monster the anger the, the destructive power within someone when uh basically life is working against them oh. and you have kambaru who i love I love as a character. In fact, I would say before Hanakawa just shot up into the top ranking uh -huh. and stuff like that, Kanbaru was probably my number two. Like Hajikuji maybe yeah. like being either yeah. tied or right Same here. below. Mm -hmm. Because what Kanbaru had was this banter with Araragi that no one else had. Like no one else has the same kind of banter with um I mean that all their banter is unique, but mm -hmm. Kanbaru's was expressively I mean, unique anytime that an anime girl brings up like bl and i mean of course <laughs> that would that would uh get my interest because uh, battle lines coming soon oh but, my gosh um <laughs> but but just like the whole idea of the the yaoi fan fiction writer hmm. like that is one of my favorite tropes in anime and it's not used nearly enough i would say <laughs> but yeah. yeah and she has this she has this love for Sendra Gahara. She breaks the whole mm -hmm. harem, you know, everyone has to right. love Araragi thing. Although an argument could be made that maybe she's bi and that... No, she's like, she's teasing him. No, I... Like, oh, I, I, I oh she's definitely teasing him. She's definitely teasing him. Yeah, yeah. She she is she is aware of how much of a freaking horny pervert he is. Oh, yeah. And she's like, yeah, yeah, and dick, dick kick. And he's just like, mm, why do you got to be like this? <laughs> I kind of like that in some ways because it's a different angle in a similar way to Senju Gahara and how Senju Gahara will kind oh, of... Oh, that's right. She said, I'm a lesbian. Yeah. Yes, that's right. yes. Yeah. She, she specifically <laughs> says it. Yeah. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but it's okay. The... Uh, the aspect, though, of her having this darker side of her brings up the whole the monster inside us all kind of thing. Gotcha. But Daiki was talking with me uh, Discord earlier, talking about how she kind of represents this aspect of having a borderline personality disorder. Right, because of the the energy that she brings to this situation being so in stark contrast with the energy that she feels down beneath with the whole Sinjikahara situation, but she mm -hmm. doesn't want to deal with it, so she... She she kind of does the the opposite of Hanakawa, mm -hmm. to, but for the same purpose. Right. Sure. So, so whereas Hanakawa sure. is like, I'm going to make it so that I'm very like contained and everything. Mm -hmm. Kanbaru is like, I'm going to make it so I'm so out there, uh -huh. right? That that's kind of my armor. Right. In, in in a lot of ways, I liked how well Kanbaru's trope of being kind of the Genki girl mm -hmm. fit in so well with her backstory and wanting to sure. be like. Yep. You know, wanting to be like Senja Gahara, you know, falling in love with Senja Gahara, crushing on her, and wanting to be basically the best in these areas, like in sports mm -hmm. and stuff and physical, you know, acumen. But she can't ever be there sh showcasing the the reality of life, just sometimes not letting things go the way you desire. And oftentimes when we, you know, have something that hits us like that constantly, we go into a fight or flight mode. And hers, her oddity essentially was the... When I surrender to this, I I fight. I do not run away. Right. I go uh -huh. directly towards the source of my problem, and I beat the ever-loving crap out of it well, until it relents. Which is well, funny because oh, because I know she kind of doesn't. She kind of doesn't exactly. She goes to Araragi kind of just because he's conveniently there, and Araragi right. just stands yeah. in her way essentially. Right. It's the it's the whole thing yeah. of the I wear my heart on my sleeve, yeah. but it's actually like that's like ninety five percent of it, mm -hmm. and then there's that other five percent of it that like she keeps yeah. very much hidden, oh. and that's why she can't go to the actual problem 
Senju Gahara. And then when Senju Gahara shows up, exactly. she doesn't even want to. Yep, it's, yep. It's, oh, it's so good. Yep, yep. Yeah, I, I loved episode eight's ending, but I I specifically love how I really understood Kambaru's progression and development as a character, given that I feel like her backstory was one that went the furthest back, if that makes sense, of all the girls. Hers other than maybe Senju Gahara. Senju Gahara had an event in the past and had some dealings with family and stuff. Uh -huh. But we didn't really see it as much because it was a traumatic, you know, like Senju Gahara had PTSD from the whole thing. Right, so, right, right. So that was all, you know, there. But I loved I loved Kambara's backstory yeah. with, uh, with that whole setup yeah. there. And then, of course, the one character that we, yeah, we have to mention, even like, though, you know... Because even though, even though Sengoku is my least favorite of same. all of the characters... right the visual imagery that they did with the mm -hmm. whole snake aspect of her having the coat yep. that's like draped over her shoulders yep. and the hat and everything and and then just the opening being incredible but like yep. like Sengoku's I feel like the the tie to the basic the thematic elements of the oddity were the best for her yeah it was just that the execution sure. and how it tied to her growth as a character I didn't like as much. And a lot of that was probably because it was two episodes as opposed to three. That's Cause true. Because even, even with Senju Kahara, yeah, she had two episodes, but there were no other... But they no threaded other... her throughout as well. Well, they threaded her throughout, but there were also no other characters really in the show at that point. So sure. they didn't have to worry about ban Aragi Banjo. <laughs> Rest in peace, people. Hanakawa is basically... Right, like... exactly. Which yeah. is another thing Ouch. that ties in great into the, into the whole thing with her there. Yep. But then you could also say potentially that while episode two is the conclusion of, of Senju Kahara's arc, as far as the oddity was concerned, that episode 12 is kind of the resolution of her arc because that's right that's where it's not just the whole thing of the oddity being resolved but you also get to see how much she's grown as a person how much she's changed and how 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 much of a positive influence araraki has had on her right beyond just solving the oddity because yep. the oddity is a representation of yep. what's going on on the inside yeah 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 the 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 sengoku stuff that i think back on and go okay that was really interesting was more or less the idea that there were other people that are nameless faceless people out there that just said some nasty words mm -hmm. and that was enough to send this very you know young right. uh naive and i would say also a bit um malleable girl into oh, sure. a state of depression one might say she was very flexible because you know she maybe didn't have as much of a spine as she would have liked and that's why she didn't confess to aragi in the first place when she liked him because she was friends with his sister and all that for sure you know um i thought you were gonna make a snake joke that whole time basically i mean no it was no not not a joke but just like an yeah you understand um, an actual it. Yeah. comparison but yeah. but um and then and then even then and this is probably one of the other things that would have made me more invested in that arc mm -hmm. is removing the fan service aside because that it got really fan servicey but um but with having the oddity be more directly tied to sengoku as a person because with the whole the whole bullying aspect i'm totally on board with it there but i feel like because of that that ended up having there there ended up being this level of like indirection between the oddity and her okay. as, as a person um but you know, at the same time, the whole idea of bullying as an oddity, it's like, yes, absolutely. So, you know, maybe maybe it really would have just been something that another episode would have fixed. Yeah, and I, I do find it to be... I do find it to be something visually, I would say, something that works really well with the whole idea of depression. I, I, I've never been diagnosed with depression and stuff, but I know what depression feels like. And the idea of being constricted, the idea of having you know uh, a dual aspect to the depression where it's not just easily solved with just uh, a friend coming and stepping in and stuff like that mm -hmm. there's a lot that you need to do as a person so you know in a lot of ways sengoku's arc ended in a way that felt like oh there's some there's some consequences to us kind of screwing this up here right like there we don't know what here right mm -hmm. we don't know where those snakes or sorry one of the snakes went back potentially to the people that you know cursed her and, and we just don't see we what just don't see that. that yeah and that's kind of dark basically realizing that there's a cycle being mm -hmm. somewhat perpetuated here right. and it didn't necessarily end here right because even if it doesn't go back to nadako or uh, -huh. uh sengoku yeah. um uh those are both of her right, names, right, right. Right. Yeah. uh the consistency otherwise <laughs> so many characters i will get confused. right i got you um uh <laughs> 
it could go to someone else, you know, because because yeah. that like they haven't been changed, mm -hmm. and so they they will probably end up doing the same thing still if if something like that ends up happening again, For sure. you know, um, and then someone else will have to deal with that kind of problem. Yeah. Oh man. What well, one of the things that kind of surprised me about this show overall was the amount that in the beginning of the show mm. the fan service aspect was something that kind of bugged me it was something that kind of kind of made me go wait wait like you know what what did i sign up for here mm -hmm. but then how quickly the simple character interactions just made this show go from being like a oh this is kind of an odd beast and then to I love this show. Uh -huh. And yeah. that's that's why I put number five as basically the first episode five is kind of the first episode that I really wanted to kind of bring up with that whole bit here. Because while the Hachikuji twist and everything was fantastic, mm -hmm. having a protagonist that interacts primarily with other characters and the entire story basically basically bends around our protagonist interacting with other characters in a very like dating simulator mm -hmm. type game but i mean a sophisticated you know one naturally naturally naturally, naturally. <laughs> it makes it so interesting i i have never experienced a story built so from the ground up around just character dialogue slash interaction oh yeah it's absolutely fantastic and like when i think about it because like the monogatari franchise came from light novels right mm -hmm. and one of the things that was kind of a rude awakening when I would read some light novels from like anime series that I really enjoyed mm -hmm. was how bad a lot of them were written and it makes sense. Cause you know, if you're cranking them out once every four months or something, then yeah, you know, and the translation and all that stuff. But one of the things that I noticed was that there was a lot less description of things. Oh. It would, it would just be like, okay, they, the characters would speak and then, the, you know, they would speak and then maybe you'd have their internal monologues. Sure. But that would be about all that you would get. Right. Right. And, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't like the story wouldn't go that much into the descriptions of things and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, and there's a part of me where I was like, okay, great. Cause I'm not the right. biggest fan of that. Right. Um, but it felt like with a lot of light novels that I would read that I would lose out on the, the body language of, of oh, the, the characters okay. and things like the that. visuals exactly right you Which know because of course the visuals aren't there right filled with well well but yes and that's why i think shaft was the perfect choice oh but okay. the thing is is that the dialogue mm -hmm. the show's like all dialogue and i think that's something where like and this is all all um conjecture because i haven't actually mm -hmm. read the light novels for the monogatari franchise but i get the feeling that this series was made to truly be in the light novel format. And then mm -hmm. Shaft comes along and they do an excellent job of adapting it into an animated format. Right. Because the level of dialogue in here and the fact that it's so witty and it's got so much pop to it. Right. I can absolutely see how it would work amazingly well in a, you know, 200 page light novel. Totally. Right. Yeah. Um, whereas like other shows that I went and read the light novels for, it was like, Oh, okay. Well, you know, that it was a good adaption, you know, but um yeah for sure yeah so now that we've come to the end of bakamonogatari one of the things that i am kind of curious about is on what level would rewatching certain like aspects again because uh, i've already rewatched a couple things now but uh specifically for kind of prepping for kizu monogatari which is what we're doing next y'all we're doing the three uh, movies mm -hmm. uh, next, um, you know, one a week. Yep. So that's going to be a big video. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then whatever is after that, I don't know. Yeah. Because yeah, it's we, uh, it, the list is there somewhere. Yeah, but it's, there's a list we've. Got I don't somewhere. remember what all the names of the different parts are. For sure. But yeah. Right. So, oh, can uh, you give example of some bad visual novels I read? Well, visual okay. not visual novels, but light novels. Um, the one of the ones that was a big shock for me was uh, the Haruhi franchise. Oh, okay. Because the it wasn't a smooth read, basically, um, especially with like the internal monologues and stuff. So, so Toradora light novels, the first one was really good, and it was very different from what other light novels that I'd read were were like. 
Um, and then even with the Spice and Wolf novels, and the, and those do focus on dialogue a so lot. So those are good ones. You're those, not answering are, which ones were well, bad. Well, though. those were those were good ones, but there were still things that I that I noticed that I didn't like mm-hmm. about it that were missed because it wasn't a visual medium gotcha. anymore. And I feel like with the Monogatari franchise in particular, it would circumvent almost all of those problems just because of how much of it is dialogue. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um. Do it. Do some rewatching stuff. Hunter Hunter and Monogatari is so good to rewatch. <laughs> People's comments getting purged because of leading remarks, it looks like. Um da 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 da. Um uh going back a bit. Um, oh, Nautico's voice actor is the same as Mayuri in Steins Gate. Oh, cool. Well, that's cool, Wally. That, Thank you for the info there. That's yeah. That's, now that's I can great. Now I can totally like hear it. Like, do do do. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Hey, no. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you can't save anyone. You can only save yourself. That's right, Dragon. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yep. That's that's true. <laughs> the bros have 500 IQ, so please be careful <laughs> in word choices. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. Um. Uh, let's see, going back down here. Uh, oh, everyone I've spoken to about it says uh, Nisiosin's uh, novels translate really well into great books. Cool. Okay, so uh, essentially what that means is that because, you know, Monogatari is so popular mm-hmm. and successful, Shaft is doing a really good job of, of adapting uh, the source material. Uh yes yeah yeah for the series yeah and and I and I can imagine that yeah the with with how big just the Monogatari franchise is for like the English translations of the light novels they probably make sure to do it do it proper totally totally um excited for the Kizu reaction yeah before the anime people were saying that Monogatari was almost unadaptable it really says Whoa. a lot about Shaft yeah uh huh that's awesome. Okay, the light novels from Monogatari are constituted of a series of six, six, and six books. <laughs> Whoa. Hmm. Okay. Nice little little hidden uh, reference there. <laughs> One of the things that I, I also like about this is that given how it handles the characters and the fact that it handles each character very well. Okay. Um, I don't know if the light novels are necessarily like this. Maybe it's multiple characters per light novel. But I could definitely see it being something where you basically have a full light novel per character or like Uh two characters per light novel for sure um and that's that's something that i would be very interested to see how it's handled in a light novel format because even though you don't have the visual aspect Mm -hmm. because again of how much of the light of of the story is dialogue i could see it being something where you end up getting a lot more than you do in the anime sure because like even though the anime probably hits all the important parts and like you know and it really does a good job of keeping the heart of the story when it goes through i get the feeling there could be a lot more content in the light novels Mm. for the characters and the arcs and everything and that's something that's kind of cool just hearing how good shaft has handled this whole thing is that um uh you know, David Productions with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. There's some times where it's just like, you know, an anime production, it was meant to be for a specific studio. Mm -hmm. Like Shaft just actually just killing it with this and then David Productions actually just just making, you know, everything about the JoJo's experience better Mm -hmm. by, you know, doing By fans for fans, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, Shaft deserves a lot of credit for that. It's amazing that such a long-running series has never dipped in quality. Hold on. I just, just yeah, there it is. And it's never dipped in quality. Nisio is a mad genius. I think about it. Inform more information heavy anime such as Monogatari, we can guess that they come from light novels. Yeah, oh, probably. that does make a lot yep. of sense. <laughs> I will keep yarning this until you see. Bakugo's voice actor did an all did an in character cover of some of Nautico's OP. Whoa, okay. that's awesome. That's great. I can oh. only imagine how much yelling there must have been in there. <laughs> wow. Oh man. Uh uh chat, is it allowed to ask questions not about the discussion? Yeah, yeah, you can you can ask questions about that, but we're we're probably not gonna do uh too much discussion around questions outside of it. Mm-hmm. Just just go for it. 
Ooh, oh. Jacob, Banter and Spice and Wolf anime versus Bakumonogatari. Ooh, okay, so um, that's tough to say because I watched Spice and Wolf in the dub, not the sub. Okay. Um, because the dub for Spice and Wolf is fantastic. Okay. Jim Michael Tatum, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, I would say it's comparable. the The difference, the the main difference, I feel like, is just in the number of characters, mm-hmm. because. Um, the plot in Spice and Wolf is not directly tied to the the growth of the characters, right? Okay. Like not not in the same way that the oddities are, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but sure. the thing is that with Spice and Wolf, you're mainly focusing on the two main characters, right? Um, so it's something where I feel like the Spice and Wolf is basically what Buck, or Monogatari would be like if it was just Araragi and Senjibahara. Like that's that's basically what it would be. Um, now comparing waifus, I mean, <laughs> that is that is a bit beyond my pay grade. Um, <laughs> but nah, nah, it's not. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we can do that. So saying like which one is better? Hmm. That's tough. That's tough. Like that's really tough. The the fact it's basic. Like I feel like it's basically a thing of do you want variety or do you want um, consistency? Okay. Because with Spice and Wolf, having it be the same two characters really gives you something special with the interactions. And with Monogatari, the fact that you have so many characters that all are done so well really gives you, you know, the a variety. different experience. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Productions is so good. Yes, though, just like Araki is somewhat of wild level consistency. I guess it's fitting. Um, Shaft was meant to animate three Gatsu and Monogatari. Yes, yes, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Um... Uh... There's something see. I think I saw up up above. Oh, up, funnily enough, JoJo was also considered adaptable before the anime. I, I could I believe definitely it. see that. Yeah. Oh, true. Shaft oh, yeah. does a great yep. job, but the fact that the writing is consistently great instead of feeling phoned in is very impressive to me. A lot of authors and creators of long-running franchises get tired of their own work and eventually or write themselves in a corner. Yes. That's good to know about the future of Monogatari is something that's you know crazy, is that like the, the movies we're about to watch, they came out like recently, like not that long ago even though in the order that we're going to right they were them, supposed to be, they were supposed to have come out a lot earlier but like production issues or something or whatever like yeah right. uh-huh. and now like th- there's still monogatari stuff like yeah. coming out mm-hmm. and like you know it's still such a you know influential yep. show and yep. stuff that it's yeah. it's crazy to think that we are just getting started on something that mm-hmm. could be on the scale in terms of like you know industry like anime industry influence and stuff like that as something like jojo's like right it's kind of crazy yeah not to shout out to battle lines again but <gasps> but let's do it but let's do it anyway <laughs> yeah the reason why it's a standalone book is because i have seen so many stories mm-hmm. where there there'll be these amazing stories but they won't finish or they won't finish right away or and when they do it's it's not as good you know because because you can tell that, that writer's fatigue is setting in or or you right. know they write themselves into a corner or whatever and that's so the fact that that doesn't happen with monogatari is awesome because that like that is my biggest fear with long running series like gotcha yeah Oh, uh, Rami's Haruhi and Monogatari's light novels are single-handedly responsible for the boom of light novels in the industry. Thus, you get so many light novel adaptations. Yep, yep. That's, Haruhi that's, that's, that's definitely awesome. played a huge part in that. Oh, cool. Thanks for the reply. Some of the YouTube videos are in my hair academia reactions have been removed. Is there a way to see those reactions? Patreon, for example. So, so, so most of them most of them will be able to stay from now on because we'll have to do them in timer ways some of them will retroactively be fixed as timers but a lot of them won't be yeah because because we started doing we started recording them in the ways so that we could do timers a ways into it so some of them it's just yeah some of them it sucks but we won't be able to get them back i still have them but it's just a question of whether or not we'll find another place to upload them eventually right but currently there's nothing um the show follows the light novel very closely the stuff they cut out are extra conversations you can pretty much follow along with the show in light novel that's oh, impressive cool. awesome that most adaptations they can't do that because right. and, if know, they, and if they try to it doesn't work right maybe in a lot of ways the genius of bakamonogatari being actually adaptable is because it's all dialogue primarily sure and the fact that they just got they got shafts to do it so that that way there's all the stuff thrown in there with the dialogue like the the different like scenery pieces and stuff that they put in there yeah and the neck tilts the neck tilts are very important for sure 
Uh, if you like Monogatari, I'd recommend Kara no Kokai and Boogie Bop. They're both urban fantasy mysteries like Monogatari that were a bit more common in the early days of light novels. Kara, in particular, was turned into a great movie series by Ufo Table. UFO table and is loosely connected to the fate universe. I've seen the Cardinal Kyokai that. movies. They look gorgeous and the music is fantastic and the coolest eye powers in anime. Oh, not Boogie nice. Pop though. I haven't seen that. Shinobu is most definitely best girl. And this is considering that the Kizu movie came out like six years after a large portion of all Monogatari had already been released. Oh, that's, that's cool. Uh, uh, do you like the battle armors in Boku Monogatari? What? There aren't any? Who cares? Go read Battle Lines. <laughs> Nusker, you're hilarious. Uh, uh, Monogatari can honestly last forever, if I'm being honest. Wow. Dang. It's cool to think about a series having a true eternal, true eternal staying power because the plot can be almost anything. The characters are the, the story. The characters are the story. Because yeah. Jacob and I have been talking about this for for a while and it it would have to come through a medium of something like monogatari for us to mm -hmm. find our first true representation of the characters are the story when we watched haiku for the first time we got a little bit of a taste of that mm -hmm. now it has to be you know a sports setting there has to be these games there has to be these little, right. little plot things that go throughout it but the love of those characters and the dimensionality of those characters was such that most of the fans that I've met do not give a rip really about what the Haiku characters are doing. They will consume exactly. any type yep. of content with that. Yep. And I feel like if Monogatari continues like this, they could get to that same level. And apparently it mm -hmm. already is at that level, according to you guys. Right. So that's that's just awesome. That's that's exciting. The ending is not paramount. Yeah. I mean, I mean, hey, a lot of times it's not. Sometimes it very much is. A good ending. Times, a good ending is. I mean, a good ending is very special. Okay, <laughs> battle lines. Um, <laughs> uh, all Kanbaru's books are just leather-bound copies of battle lines. She bought them for the acronym alone. Yep, that's that's right. That's SOS, right. SOS Bros react to never-ending monogatari, monogatari in JoJo's. Hey, that sounds like a pretty good. Sounds I mean, pretty good to me. <laughs> I mean, eventually we'll catch up though, because like even if it's like a two-course show every year, right? You know, then then we're we're keeping we're we're going at double the pace. So there you yeah, go, there exactly. you go, exactly. <laughs> uh, year twenty ninety eight, the newest Monogatari installment is released. It's still ten out of ten. <laughs> oh my gosh, all Kambaru's books are just yeah. leather-bound copies of Battle Lines. She yep. bought them for the acronym alone. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then she's distributing them around like her teachers, like places or whatever. Oh, just just like... hiding them in corners of buildings yeah, and yeah. stuff, and giving them to people on the subway. And oh yeah, uh, it's just hilarious. just running past people and putting it in their hands. Yep. Most long shows you'll find out can last forever. Hunter Hunter, JoJo's, Monogatari are examples you know of, but there are so many examples in anime and manga, and they're way more than you'd think. Well, one of the things that's unfortunate, I would say, about generally stories like this is that a lot of them could have gotten to that but they don't get the chance because they flubbed something in the execution with sure. regards to their story. Right. Or, or it's just something of like, maybe the creator wants to do something else, you know, sure. like who knows? Or, or in the case of maybe something like Berserk, it's too depressing. And the, you know, creator wants to, you know, play, I mean, love live and stuff. I, I mean, I that guess, story or... is going to end Definitely. Like, very specifically. Yeah, it, it needs to end. But the thing is, is I feel like, I feel like there's a couple roots being taken here that's very interesting. With JoJo's, you have the the lineage, the family, right. the bloodline will never die. The reincarnations, yeah, know, consistently. So Monogatari, yeah. you will always have opportunities for people to talk, and Unless because somehow they graduate from high school. Well, yeah, yeah, but on on that respect, the whole aspect of them being maybe eternally in high school is something that you know you could just have and it wouldn't really matter because the story being so entirely based around the interactions and stuff is you know a big deal i mean even though they you know talk about like oh so university and stuff like that you know uh -huh. but then you a have career plan but then you have the other types of stories like hunter hunter where the story is actually the world the world itself is kind of the thing that will sure. never mm -hmm. never run out right. of stories to tell i think avatar last airbender fits that whole blend to me in that it's the character interactions right. that i love so much the characters are the story but the world is the story the... Yeah, but that might just be because of how much we love it like how much of an impact it had on us personally oh yeah like yeah but yeah yeah but i i still think it, it kind of fits all the same oh sorry i didn't mention you out, shout you out here storm flop thank you so much for the follow yes thank Glad you to have you here uh two monogatari a week no mm -mm. no nope <laughs> we don't do two a weeks anymore 
The show is my top two, and I just watched it last year. Erwin is my president. Wow. Wow, that's some high praise. Okay. Okay. All right. Dang. Um, Zavardo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Star Platinum with the Twitch Prime resub. Six months in a row. It's Monday, my dudes. <laughs> it is indeed. Uh... <laughs> You know the the video of the guy going, it is Wednesday, my dudes. Nope. And then he just, in the Spider-Man album, and then he goes, ah! <laughs> uh, apparently oh, I'm uncultured. Man. I mean, I already oh, knew that. Man. It was honestly so cool seeing you guys transition from what is this acid trip of a show to this show is incredible, I'm strapped in for this ride. I had the exact same experience myself, and I'm basically reliving the experience through you guys. Thank mm, you so much, Dr. That's good. Thank you. Oh, Senpai noticed me. <laughs> Appreciate it, Stormflop. Yeah. Uh, I'll never understand your Avatar bias. Well, that was one... Okay, so Avatar was kind of what got us into anime just in general and, like, animated series. Animated series, But yeah. I would say that Avatar is... Okay, maybe it's not timeless, but damn, is it good. Like, yeah. it, 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 does the simple, it does the simple concept with the high execution so well. Yeah, and I would even debate that there's never been in a kids show anything like it. Yeah. Like I would uh-huh. say it's unrivaled in terms of right. kids television drama. One of my favorite things but it's, with it's, yeah. with stories is being able to tell people about it. And so so like with anime, the list that I can tell people about is very small and it's usually for specific people, right? Right. And so why things like a silent voice I love so much and, and whatnot. Yeah. Avatar, you can you can shill it from from the mountaintops. Yep. You know, everyone will watch it. Exactly, like and not necessarily everyone will watch it, but everyone could watch it and absolutely enjoy it. Like yep. you you can you can you know tell tell like friends to you know have their kids grow up watching it or whatever. Yep. Like you know you you yep. can get old people into watching it. You know yep. anybody. Um, it's it's just so good. Yeah. yeah, and I would say if you want to get someone into anime, start them off with Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yes, within two or three months after watching that they will be watching anime and and more or less they will take your anime recommendations right exactly this is my like caleb wants to sell you anime Uh like yeah you want to know how to get people into anime start them with that right work work your way slowly through into the other mainstream stuff don't start them on domestic girlfriend because there's a lot of weirdness out there in anime right Mm -hmm. and and it's it's I mean, you know, you remember when you first watched anime, like, and, and it, some of them might not. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe not. But but with with Avatar The Last Airbender, you don't have to worry about any of that. And then you can just, you know, show them some more normie anime. But Avatar The Last right. Airbender is just get them up for watching cartoons. Right. You know. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is really good. But Bakamonogatari, we've mm-hmm. watched it. We yep. loved it. It had, I would say uh probably one of the most dense kind of character driven stories and yet i would say never really developed uh like i would say about half its cast beyond uh where araragi is at so there's this kind of feeling that they're setting mm. the foundations sure they're uh-huh. building the cast and they're going to introduce more characters over time but they're definitely going to keep these characters around. At least I hope so. At least the majority of them, I hope so. <laughs> but um, now that we are going into Kizu Monogatari, right? Do you have any theories specifically about what are some things, story wise, arc wise, character development wise, that you could see coming in the future? The main one is just Shinobu. Shinobu. Because, because yes, Shinobu definitely. is the is the big mystery box that basically has yep. been built up a bunch, but yep. they didn't actually get to in this. So the mm-hmm. fact that this is what was like chronologically supposed to be the next one, you know, right? Um, yeah, it's like mm-hmm. okay, yeah, I get the feeling I know why, right? Um, and that okay. <laughs> that makes me very excited for a few reasons because one, um, three movies normally in you know Bake we would get three episodes, and even with Hanakawa a lot of her episodes were also kind of split with building up Shinobu. Sure. So the fact that we're getting three movies, that's even more content. That's even better. But also, um, movie budget. I saw yeah. that, that you know, three quarters of a second in in episode 15. Like, 
Like, Shinobu doing all those crazy flips and just... <laughs> yeah, that was that was that Kicking was Kicking Hanakawa amazing. back. Yep. Like, if we can get anything close to that, close yep. to that... I mean, it'll be a movie movies. budget. So if it'll anything, be a movie the, budget. Yeah. If anything, the movie budget will spoil us before we watch the rest of Monogatari, right. you know? But, like, yes... Please. Okay, that so will be awesome. So Shinobu primarily. Yeah. Okay. My one that I mentioned in the discussion, you guys will see this when you watch the episode, mm-hmm. is that I am really excited for Hanakawa's storyline in the future. I do not think her arc even came close to ending there. It felt like they intentionally cut off certain aspects of her development in a good way. Okay. By uh-huh. having Shinobu come in. And basically, right. like, boom, like, Temporary, solve it. Yeah, yeah. Just basically, Temporary like, solution and... Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. But we're not done here. Right, because we don't like, know how much she remembers of what happens, and her mm-hmm. and Aragi haven't had that conversation that they need to have, so there's There's that. going to be so right. much more in the future. And Hanakawa, specifically, I feel like if they do her well, the same way that they did here in mm-hmm. Bakamonogatari, I think Hanakawa could end up being one of my favorite characters because I entirely understand the simplistic aspect of having a character that denies themselves, that lies to themselves, that mm-hmm. basically is like not willing to express who they really are and ends up developing a, a, the complex of having the you know fully expressive side. Uh-huh. It, it's It's something that I had like, I'm very excited to see uh, more of. Um, I would say I, I foreshadow specific. I see the foreshadowing specifically of where, you know, you have all these girls and they have their problems and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Araragi eventually has to have some development. He has to have some character right. focus. And, and they've and, they've given that they've sprinkled it in over the course of the of the arcs. But like, if we got a dedicated Araragi yes, arc, that would be really cool. Dedicated Araragi arc, and have it be a thing of him having to be more self-aware about his own problems mm-hmm. and realizing that none of these girls can help him. Like he has to solve it, and sure. that's the kind of thing yeah. that would make me, I would say, like like his character again even more. Um, uh, and I don't really have any specific theories because this show doesn't really have a plot if you understand what i'm saying right you can't really make plot theories with this show but i i am excited to see the show evolve Mm -hmm. into a different structure than what we got in bakamonogatari well because it had in bakamonogatari Mm -hmm. sorry i'm almost done that they had like these mini arcs that made themselves basically instead of episodic it was like three episodic you know yeah and then there was a linear relationship that carried throughout it exactly and then there was some linear foreshadowing that carried throughout it oh yeah but i felt like the the characters who were not the primary focus this um this section of 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 monogatari were given little kind of like little little sprinklings of stuff that it's like okay okay Mm -hmm. are they going to continue off of like leftover development from Kambaru or sure. stuff for well, Hachikuji. Mean, like given given how and even Sengoku. <laughs> given how um how many episodes there are, like right. just how long Monogatari is, mm-hmm. I feel like we're definitely going to get it for all of the characters. Like, yes. Like yes. That, that's just, just gonna happen. Yeah, right? I'm just like the specific things that I'm most excited about to have as soon as possible. Right. Like like um, please give for, it to me. For give Kizu me. specifically mm-hmm. Because, like, I, I would say, I, I would be surprised if it didn't focus on Shinobu. Um, so, assuming that it focuses on Shinobu, um, there are a few things that they'll probably do. Mm-hmm. At the very least, I think they'll do a lot of flashbacks that are more in-depth. Okay, sure. But I think it's very possible that they will do a, um, like, an actual, like, multiple timelines where, where it'll be, like, maybe present time and then in the past or just in the past. Sure. Um, which would be unfortunate because then that would mean... It goes slower. Well, oh, right? oh okay. I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say that we would see less of the characters that we know from Bakke. So, like... It, like That's if, okay. Like, and, and that can be fantastic because then it's yeah. focusing on Shinobu, which would be fantastic, right? right? You know, because then, then you're, you're focusing on the character that's getting the development, right? Uh-huh. Um, but I could just see that being something where, like, if... 
because because the thing is that it could also go into it could go into Aragi becoming a vampire, the whole thing with Shinobu, mm-hmm. and like her older form and stuff, and before like she like got her arm taken off and then turned Aragi. But then there was also that other guy that she was fighting, right? And that seems like that seems like that will be the the equivalent of the oddity because since Shinobu is a vampire, having her be a vampire isn't doesn't seem like it would be the oddity because no. that's a part of her nature that is just that's that's how she is, right? And yeah. if anything, it would be the the complications that arise from being a vampire. You know, maybe okay. the the intrigue or the the rivals sure. or something. You know, she has some some right. super vampire enemy or a werewolf or whatever they end up being. Mm-hmm. Um, which could be it's really good. cool, um, but the I love more... that you're really excited though for Shinobu specifically. Well, yeah, because they... they've like they've done so much like mystery build up of like, ooh, this is coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the the thing that will be a bit rough, I think. Oh, okay. Because spending less time with the characters that we've met in Bake, uh-huh. okay, like Kanbaru and and you know everybody, Hachikuji and yeah, mm-hmm. that that that'll be unfortunate. Okay. But how much Senjigahara are we going to have? That's the real question. Because if they go, if they were to go full, just have it be in the past, right? Which, in order for it to be like truly self contained as far as like watch order and stuff, uh-huh. you know, then I would think that they would have it be completely separate. Then that would mean that we wouldn't have Senjigahara in it any of it and that just seems that just seems kind of depressing are you just specifically talking about kizu yeah oh well i i i honestly wouldn't expect them to have to follow any character cast or all together in this thing rules because if it's a movie or it's a series of movies they can do whatever they want i like oh sure yeah yeah uh-huh. yeah <laughs> and i i wouldn't expect them to have like this kind of Ah, this glaring gap of like specific characters that they're like, yeah, they just won't be there. Like they could do that, but it's like even if they did, I wouldn't go like that's a that's a rough thing. Well, right, like I mean, because I suppose because because when when I'm thinking about this, like mm-hmm. predicting things with Monogatari seems kind of impossible unless it's something because it's like that they'll bring in new characters and things like that, and uh-huh. it'll, it'll sort of be like what's happening this time. Right. Um, Unless it's something that's been specifically like foreshadowed in previous stuff, so things like with Hanakawa and the whole thing with her and Ar- Araragi and the conversations there, and mm-hmm. then like maybe if they ended up going into Sengoku stuff with where the other snake went off to, or you know uh-huh. something like that, um, and then of course Shinobu because that's been built up so much, um, but yeah, because like maybe maybe it's that Shinobu kind of reminds me of another Kudure character that is a favorite of mine. Um, mm-hmm. but especially if it ends up being where it's like, Hey, we're, there are going to be movies that focus on this Kudere character. Um, mm-hmm. I get the feeling I'm going to really like them. And if that's the case, then I could see myself being like the bittersweet aspect of it being that if it's in the past, uh-huh. Senjigahara wouldn't be there because Araragi and her wouldn't have met yet. Okay. And, the, and but you said it would be present and past if you they well, did that potentially, anyway. Well, potentially, because the question is, is how how like um how interchangeable do they want them to be? Because if they have it be present and past, then I feel like it would be less interchangeable. If okay. that makes sense. Okay. You know, because there would be because yeah, because then it would huh. kind of have to come after Bake. What do you mean have to? Like, like because okay if you if you have something that goes into the past but it's going into the past from the present time uh-huh. then watching it out of order what like because because the the aspects of the things that are happening in the present time wouldn't feel like that would be something that could be taken out of order because of all the stuff that had been happening previously so yeah i just yeah. don't follow okay yeah um um uh People saying that there was some, uh, uh, whoever DDoSed me, I'm back, oh my gosh. Um, I feel like having any kind of expectations for Monogatari is a trap. Yeah, I could definitely see that. There are very many, there are many varied strategies for successful infinite series. Oh, they're talking about that, okay. 
Gotcha. Um, um, bum, bum. <laughs> killed. I gave up. Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, um, I think we're basically done here in terms of the things that we wanted to specifically discuss. Other than maybe the OPs. Oh, yeah, we should talk about the like, OPs. The OPs are sure. fantastic. Like, I love that they have the actual voice actors like sing them and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like that that's just too yeah. cool. Yeah. Um in, in terms of like also the visual stuff going on in the OPs actually telling the so story. Well. Yeah. It's something that I'm just not used to. I'm used mm-hmm. to a bunch of like either very basic I mean really basic like this is in this upcoming set of episodes. Right. Or the most like nonsensical just mash of just randomness this is impressionistic stuff that will never actually be in the show like yeah or or like a no offense like a death note opening oh where it's just like uh you have a guy that's blue and red and we have Uh random crosses apples and skyscrapers and just all kinds of Uh, all kinds of stuff there and it's just like they were like, because the thing oh, is, man. the Monogatari openings yeah. are so good, and mm-hmm. the fact that they there are so many of them in a fifteen episode like season for yeah. for Bake, uh-huh. that's just ridiculousness. But like when I watched Soul Eater, uh-huh. I actually ended up watching Soul Eater, like because I watched like the first episode like randomly, but I you know I didn't okay. get as into it right away for sure. Um, and I ended up watching an AMV that had a part from the second Soul Eater opening. Where it shows like Soul holding like a dead Maka and just ah, and I was like, "What? That happens? I need to finish the series." And then I found out that it was just the scene from the opening, and I was very disappointed because right. I wanted to see that happen in the story. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but like, even though the stuff in the openings for Monogatari doesn't directly pertain, like it's not like actual scenes from the show or anything, right? Right. right. Um, it pertains so strongly to the characters that it's what's not to like yes yes trasher khan we did notice that the ed had the stars in it that senator gahara said she could give Aragi. in yes. fact a lot of them made mention to sing that they had the mm-hmm. Vega or something. right right uh-huh yeah they were really oh, yeah. good yeah we yeah we've read the ed lyrics yeah monogatari shares a lot of voice actors with the marsh comes in like a lion don't forget that when you get to know new characters okay well, good cool now are there any good examples of anime with many ops that are all so solid oh jojo's jojo's is probably like the like, prime example yeah there 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 has not been a less than banger op for jojo's thus far like all of them been just yeah. so good yeah like yeah like, they're yeah like uh-huh. i can't i can't think of any of them where i'm like yeah yeah that one was average or right just, like just, even it was just good like, you know even, even when i think about like maybe maybe my least favorite ones it's like no but that opening's still amazing it's still amazing yeah um any other shows like that it's more just shows where they're really short one cooler shows and they just have one of the best openings ever, like Bacano. Or Domestic Girlfriend. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's right. Bacano's yeah. is probably better, though, than Domestic Girlfriend. Just saying. Bacano has kind of, in my opinion, one of the best openings. Just yeah, I mean, ever. it is a stupid good opening. It's it is definitely really a banger. Yeah. But um, but I've listened to Domestic Girlfriend's opening on repeat more than Bacano's. I mean... I mean that's that's because you that's because recency bias and also reading because manga, you're reading yeah, the yeah, manga yeah. right now yeah, and you and, want to and have would music I, and, yeah and with when, your reading if slash experience. when I read the Bacano like novels <laughs> would I listen to the OP on repeat absolutely oh Mob Psycho definitely both OPs oh, yeah. were stellar yes the thing about yes. Mob Psycho I think is that I haven't listened to the second one more than twenty times at this point so it hasn't gone into my like. Mm-hmm you know, God tier OP's uh-huh. kind of list catalog yet. Yes, Space Patrol Luluco has a banging OP, even if it's like <laughs> twelve seconds long. Yeah. It's absolutely oh, fantastic. That's, that's great. Yep. Oh man. <laughs> Having one great OP is way easier than changing OPs frequently. That's what I'm alluding to. Gotcha. Yeah. Well okay. and I mean we all know the depression that you sink into when there's an amazing OP, and then it changes to something else. And maybe the one that it changes to is still great, but yeah. but but maybe it's not quite as good. Yeah, or you know, sure. or you need to grieve for the the other Ooh. opening that you're not. Gonna Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood had good openings. Like they were all pretty oh, yeah. good. 
Yeah. Like, in a lot of ways, I would say you can clearly tell which ones are, like, the, 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 just the good ones. Yeah. But, like, then there are others where you're like, okay, this is an amazing opening. And then there's the Your Lion April opening, the first one in particular. The second, uh, the second opening for Your Lion April is good, too. Second but, opening's okay. But, but yeah. the, but the first opening for Your Lion April. That's true. Man, I love that one so much. And the Torador opening. Yeah. Also, yeah. Black Lagoon's opening. Um that's, that's, <laughs> Black Lagoon's opening. <laughs> if you if you like if you like English. If you like English, I am your angel. Like, I just like, want to blame if, you. If you, if you want, yeah, some, make like, me violate you, no matter who you are. If you, if you want like some 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 berserk <laughs> level English for an opening, check out the Black Lagoon opening. Oh it's my god, fantastic! Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, March comes in like a lion. Though he's like, because yeah. the thing is, the songs for March comes in like a lion. They're good, right? Yeah. But but the way it ties in with the story, that part where Ray is looking up and then his mm-hmm. family's there and then it yeah. fades to the Kawamoto's, like, just like, just about every time. Tears. Oh, uh, <sighs> Attack on Titan, sure. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that the second half of season one's opening is that good. Yeah, I think, like, I think it's yeah, pretty it's forgettable. Like, I, 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 skipped that, I skipped that one all yeah. the time. I am one of those people, though, that really loved Season 3's opening. Season 3's opening was so good. And all those like, people are like, it doesn't fit the show. I'm it's like, not hype mm-hmm. enough. It's like, no, it's no. amazing. No. It's fantastic. Like, if it's you haven't noticed, so if you haven't well. noticed, you know. Attack on Titan has been evolving. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. things are oh, yeah. changing. And we're not yeah. going to go into that whole thing there. But uh, mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. You guys and, are always falling in depression when a Kaguya-sama episode ends and there's no chica I mean, can you blame us? I mean, right? Can you right? blame us? Right? Come on. Uh, like, I, yeah. man, now I want to watch that that ending again. <laughs> man. Uh, okay, yeah. we're we're basically done talking about Bakas. We're talking about uh, anime OPs mm-hmm. at this point. Yeah, yeah. There. Um, I just gotta say, I am surprised that this show, that from an outsider's perspective, looks like a fan service heavy harem kind of, you know you know just kind of protagonist mm-hmm. kind of going around with the girls and stuff kind of show right. it just ended up being so good so quickly oh. and know. uh there was there was something that was mentioned mind. in the chat like way a while back but yes the the part where in episode 12 where hitagi uh has her her fan service bit with araragi mm. that was absolutely so amazing because the great. thing is you totally ship them like uh-huh. long before this point. Yeah. And then that happens and you're just like, yes, this is so perfect. <laughs> like, like oh, yes, thank yes, you yes. so much. Yes. And then, and then, uh, Araragi's little, little hair bit freaks out and, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, bleach is OP. Wow. That's, oh, wow. Oh, man. <laughs> no, no, it's the, no, ah. Uh. Oh, I was thinking of an ED, I think. That's why I had a oh, weird uh-huh. uh, thing in my head. Oh, Steins Gate OP was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Oh, yeah, Steins Gate OP is amazing. Mm-hmm. Cowboy Bebop, too. It's, it's timeless, if you will. <laughs> it's historic? Sure. It transcends the space-time continuum. Now, that's just yeah. lame. Well, <laughs> think about it this way. There's a world line where the Steins Gate OP doesn't exist. Ah, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, One Punch Man's OP is also fantastic. His car is called the Ahoge. Voice actor is Levi of Attack on Titan. Um, ah. And Psyche from Disaster Psyche to Psyche K. And Yato, Protag of Noragami. The... The last is the underdog of excellent anime. Seriously, bros, you need to add Noragami in the Tuesday slot. In the quality level of FMA and Monogatari, seriously, bros, please, you will not regret. <laughs> it's a supernatural anime based on Shinko, Shinto religion. Cool. We've heard about it. Yep. Don't worry. We know mm-hmm. We know that it exists. And we... Um, yeah, yeah. Brrr. <laughs> Don't forget about Departure. Wait, Departure? What is that? Departure? I should know this one. I, I get should a feeling I'm going too. to be... Like I'm, my palm is gonna hit my forehead very hard right. once, I, yeah, it actually comes back to me. Um, yeah. Oh, Hunter Hunter's opening. Oh yeah, gotcha. Hunter Hunter's opening is is 
fantastic. The, right. The weird thing about Hunter Hunter's opening is that the song is basically the same. Like, I think they use, like, different parts of the song over the course of the thing, and then they just change the visual. So I'm right. never sure whether it's, like, is this actually changing the opening since <laughs> it's still the same song, but it's different portions of the song, but then it's different visuals or, like... Oh, wait. Wait. I gotta do this thing for... Oh, yeah, yeah. Here. Yeah. Can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager ma- imagining managing an imaginary menagerie? Okay, okay. So, <clears> so <throat> hold on. Let me get this off of here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to paste, mm-hmm. bring it over here, bring it here. All right. And take this, make it big. <clears throat> All right, Jacob, okay. go for it. Can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager imagining me- Okay, wait. <clears throat> Can you imagine an imaginary menagerie? Can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager? Ma- <laughs> Can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager imagining managing an imaginary menagerie? Good job. Good job. <clears throat> Can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager managing managing an imaginary menagerie? Ma- managing? managing? No, I did it right. I did it right. That would be pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah. Flawless? Yeah. yeah. Well, not, not fully. Okay, actually. fine, fine, fine. Can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager imagining managing an imaginary menagerie? Yep, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you guys talk talk about Hachikuji earlier in the stream? She's one of my favorite characters, but for obvious reasons, a lot of people dismiss her or are grossed out. Um, yes, no, we like, talked quite her, a bit about her. her. She's one of my is, favorite, one of my favorite characters. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where the banter is like some of my favorite banter in the series, and at the same time, the fan service is some of my least favorite fan service in the series. Yeah, so I I I, I got over that aspect really quickly with her, but the thing was is that she by the end of episode 15 you realize she's kind of surrounded by the greats and uh she's just like a good to great amongst greats and 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 most of the greats stand at least a head taller than her ouch yeah no i i love hachikuchi Mm -hmm. i do it within yes no oh wait wait no 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 (laughs) someone paste that in i want to try that <laughs> what a way to end the podcast of Akamonogatari. Now uh, say it with me. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. If you're ever going to watch Steins Gate Zero, watch it right after I rewatch the original, or you're going to be lost like I was. Oh, oh okay. okay. For sure. <laughs> you can smile again. Nyani sore. Nyani sore. You know? <laughs> I mean, how. I think it would actually, for us, it would be meow. It wouldn't be Nya. Oh, wait, they, they posted it. All right. Oh, my gosh. There's no All way right. I can even read this, though. That's the problem. Like, like I can see <laughs> it. Wait, Jacob only mentioned Domestic Girlfriend once this podcast. I actually mentioned it twice, but yes, I can mention it again because Domestic Girlfriend is amazing. Just read it slowly. Like, can, can you imagine an, an imaginary Mia? <laughs> see? <laughs> can you imagine an imaginary Munagerie? <laughs> Munager, imagining, munaging, and imaginary munagery. It's just I'm just gonna try and do this. Can you imagine an imaginary munagery, munager, imagining, munaging, and imaginary munagery? Yeah. Jacob sounds like he's slowly dying in a vat of blue. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Let's see if I can so, do this better. See, like, this, see, like, it's not too Can you hard. imagine an imaginary manager, manager, imagine, <laughs> imaginary manager? Uh, <laughs> yes, Swiss Bros become cat girls. Experiment was a success, uh, Elon. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Doing the cat hand gestures increases. Yeah, capacity by two hundred percent. You have to do the you have to do the kagya. Yeah. 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 (laughs) How did I know I was speaking impediment (laughs) or one oh (laughs) one? Oh my gosh, no, let me try it again. Uh. Can you imagine a imaginary munagery munager managing munaging imaginary munagery? I think I'm cheating a little bit, but okay. but but I think I kind of did. Can it you there. imagine an imaginary munagery munagery? Can you imagine an imaginary munagery munagery imagining munagery? 
Uh, how far we've fallen, indeed. Yeah. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. Yada yada does it. This is so much better than the auras. <laughs> guts are in the back. Uh, just like guts, are guts, are. guts. Stop yeah. it! Stop well, it! I've become such good shameless weebs. I'm so proud of this uh, community. I'm so proud of this community. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this wow. is getting out of hand. I'm, now there are two of them. I'm feline like this is getting out of hand. Yes. But exactly. Uh, Somewhere a cat just threw up. Wait, no, no, no. Where's my Jotaro hat? Is it down there? Uh, Give it I to mean, me. They're identical, so. No, oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. No, you know what yeah, I'm about to do. I know to what do, you're right? going to do. Yep. I know what you're yep. going to do. And, dear God. Can you imagine Munagerie, 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 Imagining Munaging, Munagerie, Munagerie? No, you need to do it with the hands. Like. Yada, yada, does it. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Wow. Can you imagine a menagerie, menagerie, menaging, menagerie, menagerie, and a menagerie, menagerie? Nyare, nyare, does it? Nyare, nyare, does it, yes. Yamite! And the one to end it all will be Star Platinum. And then, nyore, nyore, nyore! No, and the one to end it all will be. Star Platinum! No, star Catinum! Yeah. <laughs> uh, what would Neko Dio's battle rush noise sound like? <laughs> <laughs> All you need basically in this is just a ho ho, you know. <laughs> you expected a cat girl, but Kono Dio die, you know. <laughs> Uh, this is all devolved into something yeah. just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Ventus PK, thank you so much for the follow. Oh, no. We're it'd gonna be, call this be, here. It'd be muta muta muta. <laughs> muta. <laughs> More like people are like I need to muta this streamer, you know. Zanyaru <laughs> though. Oh my gosh. Muta <laughs> muta <laughs> muta. All right, all right. This Mio, is a lot of fun. You're approaching me. <laughs> <laughs> kind of off topic, but have you guys watched Fungo Stray Dogs? Love to see your reactions. One of my favorite shows. Have we not. have not. I know all. I know. I know all about it in terms of like people recommending it to us over and over and over and mm -hmm. over again. I've seen the Mal pages. I'm like, you were gonna watch this at some point. But, Just like Legend yeah. of the Galactic Heroes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Just like Legend of the Galactic Legend of the Galactic that was Heroes. Mean. See, that's my. <clears throat> I've already had my speech. In yep. Yep. Uh huh. That's, that's, that's basically, a, that's the problem here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're approaching me. I can't scratch the shit out of you without getting closer. <laughs> I love those uh, cat. Uh, like people have sent us those cat. Uh, like the Jotaro cat, versus like the Jotaro. No, no, no. Thing. Cat Jotaro versus Dio. Like. Like battles. Oh yes, yes, those are fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah. John Toro, Dio, and the cat just is like ho. The cock and thing, Uh It's it's great. It's it's so amazing. Uh, yeah, we got to run though. We got to do uh, Game of Thrones stuff. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah. Uh, thank you all so much for checking out the podcast. It's been a lot yes. of fun to discussing Bakamonogatari with you. Mm -hmm. uh, check out the early access Bakamonogatari on our Patreon. It comes out on Thursday. Uh, tomorrow we've got Berserk streams, uh, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we've got Divinity Original Sin 2 co-op streams, which are coming close to the end of the game. Yeah. That's where we're at right now. We're like logged 70 hours into the actual campaign. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And then, of course, I play The Witcher 3 uh, mm -hmm. at 3 p.m. on Fridays. Right. So check those out as well. Uh, make sure to uh, uh, to subscribe to get access to our private Discord through right. here. Link Just your sync up your accounts. Yeah. Sync up your Discord and Twitch mm -hmm. accounts. Exactly. You get access to that. And leave a follow to stay t up to date on all our uh, stuff there. It's probably going to go live. But yeah, thank you all for coming in here. Hey, bed bed best podcast. Dang, I already have this impediment. Yeah, best podcast ever. Thank you so much, Wally15. Daiki with the tier one resub for the six month in a row. Was a blast. Heart emoji. Yes, heart emoji. Thank you so much. Team. Yeah. We do not uh. deserve you guys. <laughs> well, um, how's this go again? Uh, until next time. I'm, we're we're semblance of sanity. sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next, next time. Next time. <laughs> All right, one more for luck. Can you imagine an imaginary manager, manager, imagining, managing, and imagining menagerie? I'm just going to do the regular one now. Can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager, imagining, managing, imaginary menagerie? Can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager, imagining, can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager, managing, 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 and imaginary menagerie?
Can you can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager imagining managing an imaginary menagerie? <laughs> yes, you did it.